Hey guys, it's Rosie. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about the five most recent 100 highest hikes I've been on. So if you didn't know, I've been hiking the New England 100 highest mountains and I've just recently hiked the 95th one. So that is very, very exciting. Um, I made this really nice bullet journal page um, in my content journal that I'm going to be reading off of to share a bunch of points about each of the hikes, um, at least the most notable things that I remember from each of them. So yeah, let's start off with number 95, which was Stratton um, in Vermont. It is a ski area, so it's pretty well known in the area. Um, but we hiked it in March before the stay at home order was in place. So there weren't very many people just cause people were starting to stay home a bit more, but um, this was way before um, quarantine was actually a thing. Um, so it was pretty snowy the entire hike, which kind of makes sense. Even though we didn't have any snow here at home, there was a good deal left over um, on the mountains. So it was a short and pretty easy, straightforward hike. Um, you just got on one trail and followed it basically the entire way, I'm pretty sure. So it was really nothing hard. Um, at the top, there is a really nice fire tower that you can climb up. At least it was open when we were there. Um, I don't know if you were going there, if it's going to be open then, but it had a really nice view. So that was definitely a highlight. Um, there is also a connecting trail to the ski area if you wanted to walk over from the ski area or walk over to the ski area if you're hiking. Um, and there is a vlog up on my channel from this hike, so make sure to check that out. Um, next is Scar Ridge, which is quite a infamous hike, I'd have to say, um, in the New England hiking world, just because a lot of people think it's super, super challenging. So um, we were very, very prepared for this one because we had been putting it off until we knew that we were ready to um, take on this kind of hike. It is behind Loon Mountain, which is a ski area in New Hampshire. Um, and, oh, there's a pileated woodpecker. Cool. Um, and so you hike straight up the ski slope to the top of Loon. At least that's what we did. There is a trail, but we just preferred to go straight up the ski area. There is a trail off the ski slope at the top, um, well, near the top, near the lift up there. Um, and then you turn off that trail about halfway down it. And then there's an air on the ground. At least there was when we were there. That's um, not a sure thing if you were going to go there, but um, it's about halfway down and I think if you turn off anywhere around that area, you'll get to the right spot. Remember to always be prepared and don't take my advice as law. I, I mean, we all have our flaws, so just remember that when you are hearing about my advice. I'm just telling you what happened when we were there, but it could be completely different if you were going there, so just remember that. Um, after we turned off at the arrow, we bushwhacked um, all the way up to the top. Uh, we had to follow coordinates to get there, um, like on our phones and the GPS. Um, the bushwhack was pretty challenging, especially at the, the scar, which is what it got its name for, because there's this spot where um, there's a bunch of blowdowns. It's like in a, um, like a valley where wind is like channeled across it, so there's a lot of blowdowns from storms and such. Um, that makes it kind of challenging to go up. So we went through the scar um, going up to the top and the moments we got there we found out that we could just go around it. So we went around it um, down the mountain towards Loon a little bit and then it was pretty easy to get around it so that's what we did but just remember that maybe you should follow more detailed instructions. Um, also yeah it wasn't that hard to be honest, it was not what people cracked it up to be, so I was pretty surprised that it wasn't that hard. We did it in, it didn't take the entire day, so that was pretty good. Um, there's a vlog up on my channel from that one, so make sure to check that out. The next one is Equinox in Vermont, which was one I really enjoyed. Um, we hiked up a road almost all the way to the ridge. It wasn't quite a road because you couldn't drive all the way up it, but there were ATVs on it, so it was some sort of road. I'm pretty sure it used to be a carriage road, like before they built the whole paved road on the other side. Um, but it was a very pleasant ridge walk with a view once we got up there. And um, there was a building at the top that you could go into and look off a balcony and stuff. Um, 
and of course like I said there was a road up to it so that was kind of annoying because there were a bunch of tourists up there I do kind of like to be alone in the woods but that was okay because it was a uh, still a nice experience um there were nice views from the top and it was just nice to sit at a picnic table and relax for a bit cool off and then go back down um yeah that's it from equinox it wasn't very hard or anything so there's not that much that i have to say about it the next one is east Kennebago in maine um it was a pretty easy and short bushwhack it only took a few hours um, and it wasn't very memorable to be honest. I don't really remember that much from it. Um, but it did have a nice view at the top and part way up the top too. Um, we hiked it after doing a different hike, I'm pretty sure, like the same day. So I'm pretty sure it was really short, um, so that we could do that. We used coordinates to find the exact location of the top, but, um, I think we probably could have found it without because it was pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, that's basically it from East Kennebago. Like I said, it's not very memorable. Um, the next one is Elephant in Maine. Um, this is probably one of the worst hikes I've ever done. Not just because it was challenging, but it was just such a slog. <laughs> um, there was clear cutting, which is also called slash, um, because they cut down all the trees in the area and then left them laying there. So it's just this, like, thick mat of, like, dead trees laying on the ground and it's so annoying um it made it very slow going and kind of dangerous because you have to step on um trees but not fall into them because they were kind of springy still because they were still kind of green and this was recent in the past few years i think that they cut it down so it was definitely really annoying that they would do that um we started hiking up a logging road in the beginning, and then we turned off that road into the slash, hiked the slash up, um, and then there was a, um, in our instructions it said to turn off the slash, um, like at the end of it, and there was like a little bit of a clearing, and then um, there were very, very dense pine trees in the top. You could not see, you couldn't even see your feet, they were like, really up close in your face and everywhere so I can get why they wanted to slash that before but it was just so annoying up there that we could not see we didn't know which way to go so we kind of just walked around I think we looked at our coordinates too um we got super scratched up and it was really hot out and super buggy so it's probably not like that all year but we made sure to do it in the summer just to make sure that the slash wasn't like snowy or wet or anything um on the way down we followed an old like riverbed kind of thing um, because the slash was way too bad we didn't want to go on that again and that ended up leading straight to the logging road that we um, originally went on I'm pretty sure we didn't actually follow our instructions right sometimes we do that and just make up our own trail um, when it's a bushwhacking mountain but you have to follow the trail on a not bushwhacking mountain so um, it was a pretty short distance, um, like distance wise it was short, but it took us a long time because of all the slash, so I definitely do not recommend this mountain, I did not enjoy it, you have to be very experienced in hiking, make sure you're very prepared, but also like you have to be mentally prepared for, it's, it's just really long and annoying, so I didn't like it. And yeah, that is it. So I hope you guys are planning on um, hiking soon, hopefully, if the um, stay-at-home orders are lifted soon. And I can't wait to get back starting hiking again and finishing my 100 highest. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about the last 500 highest hikes that I've done. And I will see you guys later. Bye!